If you're like us out here at Piney Grove and you use your tractor a lot for brush hogging back in the thick woods, there's two vulnerable areas of your tractor. The first part is this grill area. And what's behind that grill is a very expensive radiator. If you put a stick through there, you're looking at an $800 radiator plus about four hours of labor. So we've got a video coming up where we're gonna protect this area of the tractor. But today's video is gonna be about protecting underneath the tractor. So this is a hydrostatic tractor. So it has two hydraulic filters up underneath the floorboards. On this side, we have the suction filter. And on the other side, we have the actual hydrostatic filter. So this filter right here is very vulnerable to brush coming up underneath here, sticks that get kicked up by your tires. There have been several cases where this filter has either been punctured or been knocked off. And if you're not aware or paying attention or smelling for the hydraulic smell, you could totally destroy the transmission on a hydrostatic tractor if you were to lose this filter. Let's go over to the other side and look at the other filter. This one's tucked up underneath a little bit more, but you can probably see this yellow filter right here. Just like on the other side, we need to protect this one as well. And what we've done is we've partnered with a company called Zooks Welding. Robert Zooks out there has come up with these covers that are very easy to install uh, for both sides to protect your hydraulic filters. And we're going to show you how to do that today. The cover for each side is different. This is the cover for the right side underneath your floorboard. Just got a real nice heavy duty cover. It's held in place by one bolt here that's already on your tractor, and then you have to drill a hole for this tab. The cover for the left-hand side, you use the same floorboard bolt on the front, and on the back, there's actually a place on the tractor that already has a hole, and you just slip a bolt through. Both of those bolts are included. We got the long bolt for here, and then the short bolt that we got to drill a hole in for this one. The main floorboard bolt that you'll be using is right there in that hole. This is a L3901 Kubota, which is in the 01 series, which includes the 2501, the 3301, and the 3901. Those are the smaller of the L series. There's also a 4701, but I don't know if this fits the 4701. So check with Robert to make sure before you purchase it. And also I think it will work on the new 3302 and 3902 series. But again, check with Robert, he'll know better. These are L3902 mats that I put on my L3901. They fit just the same. And they're held in by these rubber tabs right here. But you can see by picking that up, I can expose the bolt that I need to get to in order to mount these guards. Tool we'll be using to take off that nut is a DeWalt 20 volt cordless impact wrench with the impact 7 8 socket. I'll leave a link down below to all of this stuff in our Amazon store. So this should be a fairly quick install. Once I take this nut off of that bolt, this will go up under here through this hole. And here's this tab we talked about. I'll show you where that gets attached, but it'll be attached by two points and protect your hydraulics and your filter. There's the bolt from the floorboards right there. And then this is the tab you'll have to drill through and put that bolt to affix the guard to the tractor. The nut we have to take off is right there. And Kubota is a Japanese made tractor. So most everything on the tractor is metric. And this may be metric as well, but a 7 8 fits it perfectly. When all this came apart, had a flat washer, in there, then you had this big flat washer there, and then you had a lock washer and a nut. So I'm gonna put this little washer back in there, this big flat washer back in there, and then put the filter guard up. That was a little tricky to do that all at once. There's that little small uh, flat washer in there, then that big flat washer. That goes up, you gotta hold that and then put the filter guard in there. I'm going to just temp install the nut and make sure that that's the way that I want it. I called an audible on this and actually moved the flat washer from being on top of the guard to up underneath the guard. And the reason I did that is because it was actually the brake pedals were actually hitting the guard. I want it up higher so that it doesn't have any clearance issues here with the brake pedals. I took it back out just to explain this a little better. When that bolt sticks down under the floorboard. It has this washer, then it has this big flat washer, then the lock washer, and then of course the nut. The first time I put it up there and put the nut on, I put it like this and you can see that pushes this whole bracket down and that was making it interfere with the brakes. So the second time I put it up there, I only put this washer under it. And again, I didn't like that. So this time I'm taking all the washers out I'm going to put the washers underneath and that'll put this up tighter up underneath the floorboard so it won't interfere with the brake pedals. Now I don't think any way is a wrong way to do it. It's just that 
I want to make sure that my brake pedal is not being interfered with and also get this a much tighter fit up under here. That's the beauty of YouTube. You get to watch other people fail and then you can just do it right the first time. I'm just going to leave this little flat washer off. That's the final configuration I went with. I put the big washer here, then the lock washer, then the nut, and I left off that washer right there. You can see the brakes right here are actually hitting the floorboard. And before they're actually hitting this edge of the bracket by putting that bracket up tighter to the floorboard now there's no interference over here with the bracket here's a view from the top again there's the black bracket there and here's my brakes going up and down and you can see they hit the floorboard right here rather than hitting the edge next step we've got to drill a hole and we've got to drill a hole in the bracket this is the bracket and this is the frame of the tractor that protects up underneath your brake pedals. Get this squared up, we'll drill a hole and we'll use the bolt that Robert included with the kit. In case you missed it, there's his initials. And that's his information right there, Zook's Welding. Go check out his webpage. He's got a lot of nice stuff out there for tractors. This bolt we'll use on the left side, but this is the bolt we have to put in that little tab I just showed you. I don't know what size this bolt is. I'm not even gonna check. I'm just gonna marry it up to a drill bit and it looks like a quarter inch will work fine. We'll test the fit in this piece of wood. I'll just draw a quick hole. And now we'll see if the bolt fits in there. Yep, fits nicely. I'm squaring the guard up with the floorboards. I'm just looking up here and seeing that I have equal distance across the front of the floorboard. It is gonna hit the bracket a little. That bracket's actually bothering me where it's hitting the brake pedal. I'm gonna just go ahead and trim off a little bit of it. The brake pedal was hitting right here, so I'm just gonna cut a little notch out of it with this cut off saw. You can see right there where the notch is, and now there's no longer interference with the brake. I'll let Robert know that the guard was interfering with the brake on my tractor, and maybe he'll make an adjustment to the design going forward, but you saw it here first on Piney Grove. Now back to drilling this hole. It just sits better under here now as well. I don't have a lot of room to work under here. My good friend Lucas out at Peak's Peak Hobby Homestead, he's got a lift he can put his tractor on. I need to take my tractor to Lucas's. I ain't gonna lie, there ain't been nothing pleasurable about drilling this hole. Okay, the hole is drilled, but I ain't gonna lie. If there was two holes to drill, I might be sending these brackets back. Not because there's anything wrong with the brackets, but I don't think I could have drilled another hole. Robert provides two flat washers. So I'm gonna do nut side up just because I don't want the extra bolt hanging down to hit or get caught on any brush. It's gonna make Tightening this a little bit harder, but I think in the long run, it'll be better. Obviously, if this nut comes off, gravity isn't gonna hold this bolt in, which is why normally you're gonna put a bolt down rather than the nut up. So there's the nut on the top and the bolt on the bottom. And it's a lock nut, so it should stay in there. But what I didn't want was a whole bunch of extra bolt hanging down here to get caught on things going under the tractor and then bend it. And then you wouldn't be able to get the bolt off easily when it's time to change the filter. So you can do it either way. That's just the way I chose to do it. It's 7 16, so I'm gonna take a ratchet and a wrench and tighten it up. Last step we have to do is tighten that floorboard bolt, the 7 8 bolt and I can't use the impact wrench now because the bracket's in the way. So I'll just use a breaker bar and a ratchet and get that bolt nice and tight. I like to tighten from the nut side rather than the bolt because the nut's gonna ride against that washer whereas the bolt has to go through a lot of metal and there's a lot of resistance. So once I get it fairly tight, I just come from the bottom, tighten that nut up and it's done, it's on there. That's what it looks like once it's installed. You can see you got protection from the bottom protection from the back, your hydraulics are protected, and you got protection from the front. Here's a view from the bottom. There's the front edge, and the side, there's the back tire. This left side bracket should go on a lot easier. There's no brake pedals or any kind of pedals on this side. I've just got to use that same floorboard mounting bolt, and then there's already a hole under the tractor where I put this bolt in. So this looks a lot easier and a lot quicker to install. But let's see, loosen up this floorboard nut right here, just like we did on the other side. That one's actually spinning on the top, so I'll have to hold this one. So we're already starting off a little different. It's the same washer setup. On this side, I think I'm gonna use all the washers just because there's no pedal in the way, and that way I don't have to worry about losing this washer. 
that came with the tractor if I take these guards off for maintenance. So here's the side view. Here's the actual tractor. Here's the guard. I put that little washer in between there. And you can see the big washer, the lock washer, and the nut. And underneath, you can see where that bolt has to go for the ears of the guard. I got the bolt through up here, but one thing I will say is leave this front bolt loose so that you can maneuver this backside easier. If this was all the way tight, this wouldn't be able to flex so I could get that bolt through the hole. But it's in there now. Just got to tighten it. That's not going anywhere. If you don't have ratchet wrenches, you should look to invest in them. They are just so versatile. Rather than if that wasn't ratchet on that end, I would have had to move that wrench every time to tighten it because I couldn't use this ratchet up under there. The last step for this side will be to tighten this floorboard bolt. And this one actually is exposed so you can get your impact on it. I will have to say that this driver side was a lot easier to do than that other side. So for time purposes, I would allow maybe 30 minutes for the other side and maybe pre-cut it before you start putting that guard on. And on this side, maybe 15 minutes I might have invested in this. But I'll be sure to check out Robert's website. We'll put the link down below. He's got a lot of stuff for Kubota tractors, but he also is a fabricator. So he might be able to fabricate something for your tractor if you provide him the specifications. But that's all we've got for today's video, folks. We sure appreciate you watching. We'll put up some links to a couple of our other videos. But until the next one, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short, tractor hard.